Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning on a beautiful Sunday morning. My name is Ed Shenick, and I'm the senior pastor here at Monroeville United Methodist Church. And on behalf of the entire congregation and staff, we want to welcome you into the presence of God. Uh, we're going to be continuing along with our series, which is entitled The Leading Causes of Life. So often we tend to be focusing on those things around us that are frightening, those things that take life away or anxious, make us anxious. What if we began focusing on the things that brought life, the things that God gives us to lift us up? And so this week we're going to be talking a little bit about our meaning and our purpose and how that can bring a cohesion and a fullness to life. So we're so glad that you're here. As uh, we begin our time together, uh, folks who are here and folks online, if you would just pop in a just a little note to say welcome to one another. Uh, it's a great way of connecting one congregation that is with us and another congregation that is around the country with us in spirit uh, and uh, reminding us that God is with all of us at the same time as we gather. Um, here at the end of our service, I want to remind you that we have a coffee time on the patio. As you're coming out, uh, hopefully it may be a little chilly, but coffee should warm you up. And uh, we're out there on the patio as you're coming through. There are out there also um, some restaurant cards that if you purchase from the church, helps us to uh, meet our bills and do the ministries and also gives you an opportunity to go somewhere for lunch. So it's a great opportunity. Uh, to be sure to take care of that. Um, I wanted to just point you, uh, point you to the, uh, the wonderful opportunities that are in our bulletin this morning. Take a look through that, or if you're online, join us on the, uh, uh, the news blast there. There are a lot of good opportunities for small groups, uh, for studies that are just going to be taking off here over the next couple weeks, even those that are started. Uh, there's a place for you there at the table if you want to join us. Virtually all of those are online as well. So if you want to join us in Zoom, uh, let us know. Just put a note in the chat. We'll be sure to get the link out to you. Two missional opportunities coming up I wanted to just lift up briefly. Uh, one is that next week will be our MIM or MUM, MUM Cares, which is where we bring uh, items in for the Garden City Food Pantry. There's a listing of items there in the, in the bulletin in our news blast. Be sure to take a look at those. If you'd like to donate online, there is a place that you can donate directly to the Garden City Food Pantry on our website. So uh, that'll be coming up next week. Also next week, our, uh, our uh, mental uh, and, uh, health and wholeness team uh, is going to be walking in the NAMI walk in honor of, uh, of Vi Ludwig, who has been just a wonderful uh, uh, servant here for many, many years. And uh, if you would like to walk, I think there's still an opportunity to do that, or you could support those who are. Uh, just there's a place on that uh, website, if you look, to just say other, and just mark NAMI, uh, and we'll be able to help and support uh, that wonderful uh, operation that's here and touches so many lives. Um, you'll notice today, and lastly, is, is our Commitment Sunday. Uh, a number of years ago, we had had pledges all the way up into COVID, and then with everything in upheaval, we backed off from that. But this is a unique year. And so we need to kind of know where we're going from here on out. And to help us talk a little bit about that is our Chair of Finance, uh, Wendy Fraze. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Wendy Fraze, and I'm the Chairperson of the Finance Committee at MUM. On behalf of our team, I want to thank everyone for their continued support of our congregation in so many different ways. This includes your prayers, your presence, your service, and your witness. It also includes your gifts, which is part of our responsibility as your finance team. I thank everyone for your continued financial support. As we continue to grow and spread God's love, your gifts remain very important. Today is our Commitment for Ministry Sunday. So today we are asking everyone to prayerfully consider your financial contribution to MUM for 2022. Our Finance Committee has begun the process of preparing our budget for next year and analyzing with other committees our ministry needs for MUM for this new time. We ask your help as we consider the financial obligations to support our ministries, our outreach, our staffing, our building needs, and other things that God may be calling us to do. As the Finance Committee works to develop our budget, we want you to know that our committee cannot make good decisions without good information. Therefore, you can help us by making a commitment for ministry estimate of giving for next year. 
An estimate of giving is a non-binding good faith statement of what you hope to give for 2022. If you have already sent in your information, we do thank you. If you have not yet, there are extra estimate of giving cards in the pews today. They may just be dropped in the offering plate when you leave. They were also mailed to your homes. If you do not have one, if you're listening online, or if you prefer, you can call or email our coordinator of financial ministries, Leslie Thorson at the church, and just give her your information. She keeps all of this information confidential and gives our committee a total to work with as we develop our budget. As we enter this new time, we are all experiencing the challenges it produces, not just in our church, but in our homes and in our communities. But the good news is that we are all in this together and that God is with us. We are not alone. I have confidence that together with God's help, we will continue to do great ministries through mom in 2022 and beyond. And of course, if you have any questions about mom's finances or the financial ministries, you may always contact me or Leslie um, in the church. The office has our information. So thank you very much for listening and have a blessed week. Thank you, Wendy. Are we ready to worship? Let us all rise then and join together in our call to worship. Please join me in our call to worship. The God of steadfast love calls us together. We are gifted by God's promised presence. God names us and gathers us as one body. God inclines an ear to us and heart a prayers. When we meet God, there is refuge for us. When we meet God, there is also struggle and pain. God leads us to face ourselves in our potential. God prompts us to wrestle with our fears. God calls us to daring commitment and service. In Christ, we take the risks of faithful discipleship. We come to hear God's promise once more. We dare to seek the new life Christ offers. Let us join together in praise. Life is for living with you. I've made my decision. You lift me up, fill my eyes with wonder. Forever young in your love, this freedom's untainted with you. No moment is wasted. You see the sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white. Turn the color all around All is new in the Savior I am found This is living now This is living now You take me higher than I've been before it's your perfect love that sees me so. God, your freedom is an open door. You are everything I want and more. Lead the way. God, you're right beside me. In your love, I'm complete. There's nothing like living with you. This life you created, I choose. See the sun now bursting through the
clouds black and white turn the color all around all this new in the savior i am found see the sun now bursting through the clouds black and white turn the color all around all this new in the savior i am found this is living now Take me higher than I've been before. It's your perfect love that sees me so. God, your freedom is an open door. You are everything I want and more. You take me higher than I've been before. It's your perfect love that sees me so. God, your freedom is an open door. You are everything. Loving God, we come together into this place and we ask that your love and grace would fill us in this time so that as we leave here, all we do would shine with your light, your love, and your good news into a world that so needs to hear the hope and the grace you grant. Guide us now, open our hearts, that we may be filled with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Please be seated and kids, come on up. That's okay. The more, the merrier. Yeah, hi, Joshua. Okay. All right, what do I have here? It's not a, what, is, what else is this? It does look like a box. It's a suitcase. That's right. This used to be Olivia's, but, you know, she's a little old for it now. But it's still hanging around my house for, I don't know why. It just is. Okay, so this used to be Olivia's. Okay, so why do you need a suitcase? Go ahead, Jackson. So you put stuff in so you can travel with it, right? You're, when you go on a trip, you got to pack, right? And this one, you know, even has, even has a handle and wheels, right? Fancy to get you through the airport, right? Okay, so when you go on a trip, what do you pack? What do you put in the suitcase? Go ahead, AJ. Food. What was that? Clothes. Clothes. That's always a good thing to pack. A phone. When I was a kid, I'd have to pack like a really big phone. Because we didn't have cell phones when I was a kid. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, right. So sometimes maybe you have to put soap or shampoo or things like that in there, right? right so normally when I pack to go somewhere, I have to make a list. And I check off the list to make sure I don't forget anything, right? And then normally I forget something, but that's okay. Now, in the scripture that Pastor Ed's going to read later, Jesus is sending the disciples on a trip. But you know what Jesus told them to do? Don't pack anything. Why would Jesus do that, right? Like, don't pack anything. No, Jesus told them don't. Don't take anything to eat. Don't take any, clo any extra clothes. And then he told them that when they go, they should stop at any, at whatever, whatever town they were in, they should stop at someone's house and see if those people would help them and feed them. Why would Jesus do that? Get people closer to God. Yeah, Jesus wanted them to know that he was going to take care of them and that they didn't need all that stuff, that Jesus was going to be there for them. And he wanted them to go tell people about who he was. And that was really what was the most important piece. So when we go, we, we pack, right? We bring stuff. But we want to tell people about Jesus and how much he loves them. And we want to trust that God's going to take care of us along the way, right? Okay, let's pray. Yeah, we just have like a stash of things. Like a stash of all the 
You want a statue of God hanging from here? Yeah. yeah. We'll get our uh, altar guild on that. Yeah. <laughs> Lois, you're on. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's pray. Uh, Lord God, we thank, thank you that you provide every, everything we need each and every day. And Lord, help us to sh share with other people about how good you are and how much you love us and them. And uh, help us uh, each and every day to just love you more and more. And uh, it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. First, I just have to say it's wonderful to be back in the sanctuary, isn't it? And I love looking out and seeing all your faces. Yes. Yay! Yeah. Today's scripture lesson is found in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. And this is from Eugene Peterson's uh, The Message. In this way, we are like the various parts of the human body. Each part gets its un meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of his chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we are meant to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something that we are not. If you preach, just preach. Just preach God's message, nothing else. If you help, just help. Don't take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful that you don't get too bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to the good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourself fueled and aflame. Be alert surgeons, servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians be inventive in hospitality. I love that piece, and that it's, I think, one of the great guidance pieces, um, and uh, it's one I, I try to draw close to to help find guidance and purpose in the middle of times. Uh, this is a time of the service we set aside to just give thanks and for gratitude for the way that God has touched our lives. And as we're thinking today about meaning and purpose, I'm willing to bet that many of us have been touched in our lives by people who have taken on a meeting and purpose of shining with the light of God's love, God's grace, following Jesus. Who are those people for you? Um, as I'm thinking, I can think of my grandmother who taught me to pray, and I can think of my aunts who uh, taught Sunday school for years. I can think of the people in the different churches who came around me in times of need, and in the middle of those times found the support and love of God. Who are those folks for you? In this time, let us give thanks for those whose God has used to touch our lives and open ourselves to the way that God might use us to touch the lives of others. Let us pray. Gracious God, we remind ourselves today of the connection 
that you are with us and that your presence often comes through others. For those who, through whom you have challenged us, for those through whom you have encouraged us, for those through whom you have guided us, we give you thanks. And pray that we, in your grace, might be like them. That others might find life through our lives as you use, use us for your way, your purpose, and your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us continue in an attitude of uh, gratitude as we share now a gift of music. We come to a time of prayer and remind ourselves that we are never alone. There is a presence that guides us, that heals us, that directs us. 
And so as we enter into this time, there is a prayer song, which itself is a prayer, Lead Me, Lord. Uh, what I'm going to have us do is to sing that together, pray that together through song twice, and then I'll lift up the concerns that have been brought to us through this week. Uh, during that time, if you would like to leave uh, prayer requests on our chat line, please do so. Um, people will be praying for you through the week. We pull down those uh, and send them out immediately on Sunday after the service so that people can begin praying. Let us open our hearts to the one who can make all things new, even in us. Let us open our hearts to the presence of God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we lift up in gratitude all who have joined us this morning and pray that as we now turn our hearts to you, your grace and presence would touch all who are gathered here and online, that we might feel your presence and your guidance that brings life. We give you thanks this morning for those who have heard your call and have, you have sent out into our lives that have touched us with life and guidance, that have challenged us to reach beyond our comfort zones and become all you've created us to be, through whom you have supported us. Loving God, we are mindful of those in need of support this morning. We lift up Betty Harris and family after the passing of her son, Robert. Services will be held here on next Saturday. Hold that family, Lord, in your comfort and your care. We lift up Philip Williams and family after the loss of his wife this week. Williams are friends of the O'Connor family, and we pray that you would surround them with your blessing, your comfort, and your care. We continue to lift up those who are in need and recovery after all the hurricanes, the fires, and the floods. And we give you thanks for the workers who are working to restore their lives and those who are giving that they may find life in the midst of the difficult challenges ahead. For the people of Afghanistan, for the many who are seeking refuge and safety around our world, for those suffering from COVID, around our country, around our world. We lift up Stephen and his family. We lift up Dorothy and Leroy. We lift up Don, Mary Ann, Jim, Rob and Claire, Lynn, Geneva, Dan, Vi, Sam, Alan, 
Pam, Carl, Ellen, Andrea, and Julie. And those who are being named on our chat line and those we are lifting in our hearts. Loving God, surround all with your grace, your healing, your peace, your salvation and love. Hear our hearts as we pray to you. Loving God, we turn our hearts to you, for you are the one who gives us life. You are the one who redeems us. And your promise is that you will never forsake us. You are here beside us in every moment. Your spirit breathing life into our souls, guiding us and calling us to become everything you're creating us to be and using us to touch the lives of others. Remind us, Lord, of the purpose for which you created us. For the promise and the trust you put into us to be your people. Empower us with your spirit that we may live and love the way you have taught us and the ways that you have shown us. And remind us, gracious God, of an empty tomb and a cry he has risen that in the midst of death, often is the places most fertile that you birth new life in us, in our families, in our community, and in our world. See that hope deep in our souls, O oh God, and shine through us. Guide us that we may see those in need and reach out with your grace and your love. For Lord, it is you who gives life it is you who empowers it abundantly. Help us to always walk in your way. We pray this in the name of the one who you use to draw us together by love and grace, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, we continue to look at those things that bring life and seek to center our life in them. This morning, I'd like you to think about our call. Now, that's language we don't usually use for laity. That's language we usually use for clergy. But I think we're all called to be ministers in Christ, amen? So in that call comes our purpose, our meaning, our life that brings cohesion and helps us in the midst of the storms. What is your purpose, if someone was to ask you? To help us reflect on that, I'd like you to listen to these words. It's Jesus calling the 12 together and sending them out with a purpose that God had intended for them. It's found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 9. I'll be starting with verse 1. Let us open our hearts that we might hear God's word for us. 
Then Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. And whenever they do not welcome you as you are leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as testimony against them. They departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Um, Jesus was sending out his disciples, and he said, I want you to proclaim the kingdom of God, and I want you to be healers. There was a purpose, there was a meaning that brought to their life through that purpose. And in the midst of all of the turmoil, he said, you know, there will be times when you're going to get blowback from that. There are going to be times when you're going to face storms. There are going to be times when things are going to get rough. Put that at the center, I am with you, and I will provide for you. I think that was kind of interesting, actually, when, uh, when the little boy up there this morning, when AJ was going, wait, 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 what do you mean you didn't bring anything? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Why would you do that? To, to learn that God will provide and to stay centered on that presence of God for our guidance, our purpose. The one who created us is the one who brings life. What is your purpose? Dr. Marsha McPhee writes these words. She says, when we know in our bones what we're here to do and to be, we have a coherence, a togetherness. We have it together in our souls. Jesus was clear about his call. If you remember, as he began his ministry, he came to the temple and he knelt down to teach and he pulled out the, the scroll of Isaiah the prophet and he, wrote these, or he spoke these words to them. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind and to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That is my purpose, that is my meaning, and that's what it's about for me. The kingdom, the words are being fulfilled in your hearing, he said, as he sat down. This is it. This is why I'm here. I've come to set the prisoners free, bottom line. So if I bump into someone who I am seeing as being held down, if I bump into somebody who is poor, I bump into somebody who is in need, even though the mores of my society say I shouldn't be with these people, Bottom line, I am here to set the prisoner free. I am going to do that regardless of the mores of the society. See what I'm saying? It goes deeper. It goes deeper. So he went to a woman at a well he shouldn't have been talking to. He touched the lepers, even though he wasn't supposed to do that by the laws. He did the things he needed to do because of the mission that God had sent him to do. To say the kingdom of God has come near to you and to be healers. Interesting, that's exactly what he sent his disciples to do. There was a, a word in, in Hebrew that I love called, and I hope I'm pronouncing it like this. If, if Rabbi Barbara sees this online, I'll be embarrassed if I get it wrong. But anyways, the word is shalach. A shalach is a person that is sent by someone to someone else to proclaim a message from the sender. And that person is to be treated the very same way as the sender would be if the sender was there to be sent out with a message, I'm going to send you out to them, they should treat you the way they would treat me, right? A shalach. In the message, uh, Eugene Peterson words this passage this way, he says, we are intimately linked in this harvest work. Anyone who accepts what you do accepts me, the one who sent you. It's best to start small. Give a cup of cold water to someone who's thirsty, for instance. The smallest act of giving or receiving makes you a true apprentice and you won't lose out on a thing. You hear the shalach? Take a look at the scripture that Paul is writing this morning. Well, it's a letter that Paul is writing to Rome. I love this chapter 12 that Donna read for you. And take a look at the shalach in that. Be a healer. Proclaim good news. Don't be the big somebody. Be the, the somebody underneath that lifts other people up. Be the healer, be the shalach. 
I send you in my name. Proclaim the kingdom by living the kingdom. And I'd like you this morning to think a little bit about taking on the role of the shalach, Jesus' is shalach, and consider that being a purpose and meaning for your life. Doesn't mean that I'm calling you all into ordained ministry, by the way. <laughs> You'll be grateful to know that. But I believe that there is ministries that are taking place. This is one, one function of a body. I love the way Paul puts that. You know, as a, as a cutoff finger or toe, you're not going to do much. We come together, we find our meaning and purpose together. As we seek to live out to be that shalak, to be the one who brings healing, release of the captive, to take on in our lives the mission of Jesus. I've found over the years as I've walked with churches that it has brought a cohesion, it has brought a strength and an energy because God uses the church to bring life. And when we get the message of love, when we get the message of life, when we get it into our gut and into our soul, it will take us through storms, it will take us through all kinds of upheaval and bring life out of the church, out of us together. I've seen it time and time again. How do we decide what our purpose is? How do we begin to work with that? I'd like to suggest a couple things this morning. And the first one, in the beginning of a new church year, is a great time to do that, but to get back into the stories of Jesus, to read the teachings of Jesus, to read about the stories of Jesus, the healings of Jesus, the point of all that he went through, the stories that we just read today. Either start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. There are some wonderful opportunities online and also here to get involved in small groups. I do think Bible study is always best in small groups because oftentimes I see it a certain way, but to see somebody else in the body who sees it another way pushes me outside and helps me to see a bigger picture of myself. I think it's critical. Because so often in the world today, as I'm looking around, I hear people waving the Bible going, this is my Bible and my Jesus, and suddenly it sounds more like them than it sounds like Jesus. Have you noticed that? A friend of mine on, on Facebook put up a, a, a while back, you know, what, like the Bible says, for God so loves the church. And I thought, buddy, you need to pick up John 3.16 and read it again. It isn't for God so loves the church. People who look, think, and act like me John 3.16 says, so God so loves the world beyond me, even the people who don't look like me, even the people that don't have my, my, my understanding of life, my perspective of life. People may have a different perspective, grown up in different heritages, come out of different races, have different perspectives from all kinds of different places. The body of Christ is large. For God so loved the world. Do you hear the shalak? to set the prisoner free in love? Where are the places that people are stuck? See, I think first of all, start with that message and ground into that. Because that's where we begin to find that purpose that brings life. And the second thing I think is, is we reach out and look. Where are the people that are hurting around us? Where are the people that are being held down oppressed, the prisoners that need to be set free? Where are the places where there is need? This church has done a great job of that as I've walked with you folks. As we look outside ourselves. Actually, in the first couple of years I was here, one of the great privileges I had, because I was a new guy in Monroeville. Now, I'd been here 30 years ago for a couple of years as a salesman, and I, and I came and they put me here in this church in this one area coming down Center Road, but I really didn't know that much about Monroeville. And so there was a group called the Witness Team that got together with me and we went out and we did prayer walks in the area. And we went to all the different neighborhoods of Monroeville around here. And I began to realize just how big Monroeville is and how broad it is. But I remember when we were walking out and praying for different people as we were walking by, the, the, the understanding of this walking with Nehemiah is that you would look out to see where, what, you, what, what God would show you. You know, if there were toys out in front of the house, you knew there was a family there with kids, and so you prayed for the kids. 
Uh, if there was a ramp, you could tell that there was someone that was in need there. Maybe someone was elderly or someone that needed a wheelchair or needed some way to get in. And you could pray for that. And, and you could look around to see what the needs of your community were. To talk with people as you walk down the road, not to, you know, you know indoctrinate them, but to, to listen to them, learn to them. How are things going in your world? Can we pray for something for you? And as the time went, we began to see different pictures of what's around us. I wonder if we did that in our families, if we did that in our communities, if we did that in our world. It seems to me that one of the things that's going on in our world right now is it's all about me and the sense of scarcity, right? It's about them and me and, and dividing lines and boundaries that are, that are and divides that, that go across. I'm not going to talk to them because they're different than me. And all of that stuff going on, and we cocoon, and we don't see the needs around us. But Jesus' mission is the opposite way, and it brings life and it brings love. Where are those places where God may be calling you? I love the way that that journey ended. The question was, what breaks your heart? When you're out in the community, what breaks your heart? Some of us in the room were part of that journey. One of the things that was great about that is a lot of people really got a fire in their belly. God stirred it in them. The problem is that it wasn't always in that same committee, and suddenly the committee ended, but there were new ministries that started all the way around the church. And I began to see the purpose, the meaning, the strength that God came and brought right into this place. You can see the presence of God, and suddenly you're not as afraid anymore. Amen? So what are those purposes and meanings that God may be sending for you? You can do a great difference in someone's life in very simple ways. There's a lot of ways to pour a cup of cold water. What might God be calling you to do? This past week was kind of interesting. I, I, uh, uh, on Tuesday, uh, we had the services for my mother-in-law and uh, her church in uh, Oakdale called The Rock. Young pastor there named Pastor Devin, and, and if they're watching or any of them are, I, I really thank you for the wonderful ministry that they did. But it struck me when Pastor Devin sat down, I mean, he's a young guy, probably in his late 20s, and he said, and I told him I was, I've been in ministry now for 34 years, and it's really interesting to be in this time of my life where people go, 34 years? Oh my goodness, you're, I'm, I'm ancient. Anyways, <laughs> what in the world would keep you going for 34 years? And I thought about it, and I said to him, my call. Way back when I was in ministry, the Board of Ordained Ministry kept groaning on us, what's your call? What's your call? What is it that you feel God is calling you to do and be about? And actually, it got to a point where it drove me nuts but it's interesting that when the road gets tough, when things get tight, when, when the, it feels like the roof is calling, falling in, I can come back to that root and say, wait a minute, no, there's a call here. God has placed me here for this reason, and that brings a cohesion and a life. I began to, to learn about that church, and I thought it was really interesting because they'd gone through a, a storm there, literally. If you guys remember 20 years ago, there was a storm named uh, Hurricane Ivan that hit Pittsburgh area. I remember at that point I was in Beaver Falls and we were going up and down the Mon River trying to help people in the different towns that had flooded. Well, Oakdale flooded big time. And that little church is right near where the creek was and the water came all the way up through it. It was no longer usable. That congregation had to actually merge with another one and they abandoned the building. There was a death in the midst of this, you know, and how often we go, well, what are you gonna do, right? And they looked around, they said, you know, we've got a building, let's fix this up. And, and in that little building, they decided to start with a community center. They looked outside. Where are the needs? And they started an after-school program there. And they started food feeding programs there. They started all kinds of different things in ways of reaching out to lift up those in the mission of Christ. And I thought it was really strange and weird because they turned and they said, well, we can do this service for your mother-in-law, but you've got to wait till 6.30. I'm thinking 6.30 is kind of a weird time to do a funeral. Okay, that's fine. Why was it 6.30? Because they had the after-school program. They had the main sanctuary that as you walked into it was a gymnasium floor with two basketball hoops on one side or the other. And then they had a front area that they, they reset. And so the people were doing an outreach ministry all the way up through then, and they dropped all the tables, and they opened up the space and set it up for us that we could come in. And it was just amazing to see the energy of a, of a church that had been born out of death to new life. 
and the, and the focus that they had that came from the storms. I, I thought about that, and I thought for all of us, we get so focused on the death that we forget about the new life and the purpose for which we're called. And actually, in the midst of this COVID time, in the midst of the craziness that we're in, may be actually the perfect time for us to sit back and say, what is God bringing out of us? What is God bringing out of me where I am? So today, as we close off, I want us to take a moment and invite you to make a commitment to be a shalach for Christ, to invite Jesus into our souls and to guide our hearts and to be still for a moment and pray that God would open our eyes to what God would have us do, our meaning and our purpose, that we might find the life God's bringing to us and share it with others. Let us be still. Let us open our hearts in silent prayer. Loving God, we open our hearts to you. For you are the one who created life. You are the one who redeems life. You are the one who brings new life. Move in our souls. We open our hearts to you, Lord. Come and dwell with us. And help us not to shrink back to the places where you are calling us to go. For you do go with us. May we be your emissaries, your ambassadors this week as we seek to walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you all would rise, our closing hymn is uh, uh, The Summons, and it's found in The Faith We Sing, the little uh, uh, small booklet that's on the, the screen as you join us online. Let us join together as we commit ourselves to Christ.
Brothers and sisters, we have been given friends in Christ. We have been given an opportunity to step into a world anew. A God who brings life is with you wherever you go. So may we open our hearts and may we receive that life and go in confidence and in faith, knowing this, that the one who created you has redeemed you and will sustain you now and forever. So let us go, let us serve the Lord with joy, and let all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everybody.